Hi everyone, uh, welcome to Harbor Maintainer Track Talk. And today um, we have a uh, Harbor Maintainers here. We have quite a few uh, more uh, user session. Uh, let's uh, have a quick uh, round self introduction first. Uh, my name is uh, Yan. I'm a software engineer at Vimeo in modern application business unit. And I have been working on Harbor for about four years. I will pass to you, Stone. Hello, I'm Stone, uh, Harbor maintainer from uh, VMware. I have uh, worked in Harbor for four years. Uh, next. Shengwen. Um, hi everyone, my name is Shengwen and I joined VMware nearly a year ago. I am a Hubble maintainer and I also take the responsibility of maintaining the Hubble Helm project as well. In today's video, I'm going to present the Hubble 2.5 recap and course and demonstration. And Vadim, please introduce yourself. Yes, hello everybody. My name is Vadim Bauer. I'm uh, one who is not working for VMware. I'm working for a company, Acres, and we are providing Harbor as a service. And recently I became a maintainer of Harbor and I'm happy to give an introduction about what's coming up or coming next in Harbor for the 2.6 and beyond releases. Okay, thank you. Um, so if this is the first time to attending Harbor Talk, uh, Harbor is a registry for hosting your container images on Amtrust and other OCI compatible things. So we can install uh, these images and we can scan these images with scanner software and you can sign your images. Um, Besides that, um, we are the graduate uh, project in CNCF and you know, our mission is to be the most secure performant, uh, scalable, and available cloud native repository for Kubernetes. Um, it's the open source project in GitHub. And if you are interested, the thing that we have been working on right now, issues, discussions, designs, and things like that, you can go to our repository page. And there is a um, gohub.io, it offers the uh, deployment guide, installation guide, and the feature description. Uh, you can start with this website or you can start with the GitHub issue site if you have any, if you have any questions and comments. Uh, so, um, Harbor is a container registry uh, built on top of distribution. Uh, let's take a look at our core tenants. We offer a lot of uh, different features. Here are the key themes. You can have a, a multi-tenancy with using Harbor project. You can have role-based uh, um, access control with reverse uh, roles in Harbor today. And you can control this with authentication-based backend service, local DB or uh, OIDC or LDAP. Um, lots of policies are available in Harbor for managing your artifact. So you can set quotas for different projects and you can also set retention policy to control how long to retain certain artifacts in your project before they are deleted. And you can also lock down your repositories by using immutable tag so that image cannot be overwritten by push, return, and things like that. Artifact distribution is referring the ability to move artifact from one registry to another. And the target registry could be another hardware instance or third party registries, cloud registries. So you can set the replication policies for those. Proxy cache allows you to use hardware to proxy and cache images from our target registry, for example, like uh, Docker Hub. Um, there's a big theme around the security and the compliance. We allow signing images, we allow scanning images, and you can also set the CVE alert list. And last is the extensibility. 
we allow users to deploy hardware within your own infrastructure and make compatible with existing investments. Uh, I'm gonna st stop here now, uh, turn it over to Shen Wen to talk about the 2.5 release in details. Okay, so there are two parts regarding Harbor 2005 recap. One is about the new features being introduced in 2005, and the other one is improvement being made in 2005. In the first part, let's start talking about improvement that have been made in 2005 first. To improve the performance, we implemented concurrent pull requests by asynchronously updating artifact pull time and uh, repository pull count. And then garbage collection is now failure tolerant, which means it can continue to deleting subsequent artifacts when removing the current artifact errors out. The next two improvements are the support of skipping artifact replication in a classic cache project and the ability to move orphan files from the upload directory. And the last thing, Harbor is now built using Golan version 1.17.7. In the second part, let's talk about the new feature in 2005, which is mainly about integrating Harbor with Cosine. We will have a demo on this Cosine integration later in this session, but let's talk about some details of it now. Firstly, Harbor users might be interested in how Cosine signature is stored in Harbor. The Cosine signature is essentially an OCI compatible artifact stored in Harbor as an accessory, which is associated to the subject artifact and can be deleted independently. Although the accessory is an OCI compatible artifact in essence, there are some limitations on it. For example, Cosine accessory cannot be scanned in Harbor. Secondly, it is about integrating Cosine accessory with tag retention. I would like to emphasize that the Cosine accessory cannot exist independently from a subject artifact, which means whenever the subject artifact is, delete, is deleted via web UI or through tag retention, the corresponding Cosine accessory associated to it will also be deleted. And this is how Cosine accessory is integrated with tag retention, which means Cosine accessory will be removed when its subject artifact is deleted by tag retention. Thirdly, I would like to talk about how course and accessory works in garbage collection. When a course and accessory is deleted via web UI or through tag retention, the course and signature data is still physically stored in the backend registry storage occupying some disk space. The physical storage will not be released until a GC job is completed successfully. Fourthly, I would like to bring your attention to Cosine accessory with Harbor replication functionality. Since the Cosine signature is an accessory associated to a subject artifact, in most user scenarios, we would like the association relationship being replicated over to the destination registry whenever either doing a push-based replication or a pull-based replication. And that is how Cosine accessory integrates with Harbor replication functionality. In other words, the Cosine signature will be automatically replicated over to the destination registry as an accessory of its subject artifacts. Next slide, please. And the previous one. Ah, uh, yes, this one. And in this page, we have some slides in terms of course and integration, such as the support to store course and signature as an accessory in Harbor, the support of automatically replicating artifact signature to another Harbor instance, and policy enforcement to disable pulling an unsigned image from Harbor. Additionally, we have a image on the right to illustrate a visual conception of how Cosine works in Harbor. Lastly, if you are interested in more details about Cosine integration, we would like, uh, we have a link to the bottom, um, at the bottom to Cosine integration proposal. That is pretty much all I would like to share in Harbor 2.5 recap, thanks.
uh, sucks from one. So now I will pass to Stone to have uh, something about 2.6. Uh, hello, I'm Stone. Uh, let me introduce the Hubble 2006 plan items. Uh, first one is the performance. Hubble is already widely used in production environment. The performance becomes a critical issue in some scenarios, such as replication and high concurrent poor requests. As Yan already mentioned, we have already found and fixed some performance issue in 2005. And the improvement work will continue in the next release. We found that there are many queries executed uh, repeatedly in a single pull request. These queries could be cached. The cache layer will be implemented in a manager layer. Cache data in manager layer make it easy still work on whatever data persistent layer it used. We could leverage the same cache layer for Postgres or MySQL. The cache layer will be helpful to improve the performance under high concurrent pull requests. The second item for performance improvement is to add an index. For example, we have found that the task table has a job ID column, which has no index, and it often leads to a full table scan. To create our index in the job ID could improve the performance. The next example is the audio log table. It becomes huge in some environment. The audio log has no index on project ID, but for each project, there is a log tab. It is usually takes a long time to query, and it says there is no response in the UI. We will find all queries with performance issues and check if it will trigger a full table scan and consider add an index to match some query conditions. Because too many index might also bring some side effect. We will verify the performance improvement carefully with performance test. The second item is the system artifact. As we know, everything stored in Hubble is artifact. Uh, could we move to the next slide? The command image and home chart are artifact. System artifact is something related to the system. It is a framework that could be used to share data between different services. Let's talk about the system artifact from its user case. We have image scanning service, which could scan image and give uh, CV report because it might contain thousands of CVEs. We uh, found the report might be huge. Also, should we uh, move to the previous slides about the system artifact? Yeah. The CV report download process should be asynchronous. We adopt the job service to run asynchronous. Then it will export the CV report in a file. Where should we store this file so that we could consume by Hub Core? Should we store in database? It might bring some performance issue to the database. Should we store in persistent volume? We will, it will also impact the scalability of the job service part. Finally, we consider use the Redis storage to store this, this sort of files and name these sort of files as system artifact. In future, we could extend to any file needed to store. The third item is the audio log. Could we uh, move to the next slide? Yeah, the third item is the audio log. As we mentioned before, the audio log grows fast in high concurrent poor request environment. Sometimes it might reach uh, 15 gigabytes. Any operation in such huge table will be slow and also consume the hour time of database. We consider and purge the audio log table records periodically and forward the audio log to external log service, such as log, such as log inside, log stash, 
or any log process tool which could handle syslog event. When you enable the audio log to the external log service, it is possible to disable write the audio log to database. User could select either forward to external endpoint or write it to database or both of them. Beside the performance, uh, could you please let uh, next slide? Uh, besides performance and audio log, we are going to do some research work on the AZ registry use case. We have received some age requirement on different channel. For different use cases, for AD use cases, the user might require a lightweight Hubble. It may have some basic function of Hubble, such as RBAC, proxy cache, and replication. But with less CPU and memory or bandwidth footprint. Another use case is how to bootstrap our Kubernetes cluster in air gapped environment. That's all we have planned for 2006. Thank you. Hi, right, so, uh, Storm. Uh, so, so now I will turn it over to Shengwen to have a demo about Harbor integrates with cosine to uh, sign image. Shengwen, please. Hi there. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the major new feature of Harbor 2005, which is cosine integration. We have already set up a Harbor 2005 instance before this demo. The first thing I would like to show you is how to use cosine CLI to sign an OCI artifact and how the course and signature is stored in Harbor so that Harbor user can have a better understanding on course and accessory. Now let's push an artifact to Harbor. And we can see that the send by cosine icon is not checked. If we enable deployment security configuration for cosine, which means only allow verified images to be deployed, then Docker pool will be failed to fetch the image that was pushed by us a moment ago. It is failed. Now we can use cosine CLI to send this artifact. And we can see that the send by cosine icon is checked now. And now if we do a Docker pool, it will be successful. And by the way, the scan functionality is also disabled for cosine accessory by design. If we do a scan, We can see only the subject artifact is scanned. The accessory artifact is not scanned. And we can delete the accessory individually if we want. Okay, that's the first part. The second thing I would like to show you is how Corsair accessory behaves when doing a tag retention. To do that, we need to first create a tag retention rule. We have already created one like this, matching RPAN repository, exclude tag 2.6. 
the expected behavior is that both the RPAN artifact and its associated course and accessory will be deleted together. Let's do an actual run of this tag retention. And the phenomenon we can observe here is that both the subject artifact and the course and accessory are deleted as expected. The third thing I would like to show you is how course and accessory behaves regarding GC functionality. Again, after applying the tag retention rule, we can see that both the subject artifact and the accessory are deleted in Hubble portal, but let's check the registry storage. This is the backend of the Hubble Red Di registry instance. And we can see that the actual reg registry data of blobs and manifests still exists in the physical disk of backend registry storage. And they will not be released until we successfully run a garbage collection job. Let's run a GC job. And let's check the GC logs. And we can see that there are some blobs and manifests are deleted in the GC log. And let's switch to the Hubble instance backend. And we can see that the registry backend is clean, which means the disk space has been released. The next thing I would like to bring your attention is how course and signature is integrated with replication. So we have another Harvard instance set up already. 137. We know that there are two types of replication in Harbor. One is push-based replication, and the other one is pool-based replication. Essentially, the cost and accessory will be replicated over to the destination registry together with the subject artifact, no matter it is a push-based replication or a pool-based replication. We need to push the artifact and the course and accessory to the current registry first. We need to push the artifact first. and then send the artifact. Okay, let's talk about the push-based push replication first. We have already set up a replication registry endpoint before the demo like this. Harbor 137. And we have already created a push-based replication rule like this. Push-based source destination registry 137. And prior to apply the push-based replication policy, we need to check, we need to make sure that the destination 
document that contains the artifact. There's no artifact under the project, uh, under the library project. And then let's trigger the push based replication. It is successful. And we can see that both the subject artifact and the course and accessory have been replicated over to the destination registry as we de desired. And then we can use course and CRI to verify this course and accessory in the destination registry. We can see that it is validated. And next, we let's talk about the pool based replication. Pool based replication, then we need to to delete the artifact from the current registry first. And we have already created a pool based uh, replication rule already. It is a pool based the fourth registry is 137. And let's trigger this pool based replication. And we can see that both the subject artifact and the accessory are replicated from the 137 to the current registry by a pool based replication rule. And that is pretty much everything I would like to share. Thank you. Okay, and this is the demo for course integration. Um, Sasha, so for your fantastic demo. Also, let's move to the roadmap and the community part. Yes, um, yeah, thank you for the presentation on Cosign. Um, as you saw that Cosign is, is a major improvement in container security. If we, if we compare it to uh, the previous uh, solutions with, uh, with Notary, this is a major step forward um, in, in the con container space and container security. But let's focus on the uh, roadmap and then do a recap on what's coming up next. So Harper is focusing on three major areas. One is improving the core product, improving the, the quality of the, of the product, fixing uh, bugs and, and discovering edge cases that, that um, Needs to, need to be fixed. And so the other area is continuous improvement, improvement, new, function, new functionality, new features like the harbor at edge. So there's a major um, work going on on how to run edge workloads uh, or edge registry in, and implement this and integrate this with harbor. So we, we will see something in uh, the second half of the year uh, uh, something released. Then the other areas, of course, the, the day two operations of Harbor, including uh, the deployment of Harbor on Kubernetes, but also, if you're not aware, there is a Harbor operator, which is uh, allows you to operate Harbor and all the surrounding services 
um, on with an operator. And so major effort will be done here as well to improve the quality of the product and make it easier for users to operate Harbor, especially for day two. Um, and as I said, there is a major effort in improving the, the stability of, the, of, of Harbor and also improve the, uh, the, uh, the performance of Harbor. And as, as thousands of Harbor instances are running now for years and years, and the, the storage is growing, the logs are growing, everything is growing, uh, it needs to, you know, major effort needs to be done on optimizing the performance of Harbor so that, you know, Harbor can scale and um, uh, operate. Um, another area is regarding day two is the backup and restore. Uh, so the project is looking into Project Valero and how to integrate Project Valero with uh, Harbor so that uh, Harbor can be backed up in, in a way so familiar with people who are already you know, knowing Valero and using Valero in, in production. So um, the other area of improvement, and this is something also for the community, uh, currently Harbor supports only uh, Postgres, but there is a major effort going on to support other databases, not just uh, Postgres. And the next you know, desired state is to support um, MariaDB and MySQL. So there is an effort going on in the community. And if you're interested in participating, um, we're happy to uh, to invite you to join. Um, as I said, Harbor is used by you know hundreds and thousands of companies worldwide, and to my knowledge, there is over twenty thousand instances running uh, and publicly, and there is even more instances running behind um, firewalls and, and, and on prem environments. So it's a it's a huge huge user base and there's a huge community as you can see. We have a lot of contributions. Uh, from a lot of companies and, and um, um, there's a lot of issues, a lot of tasks going on. So it's a really active community and we, of course, trying to improve our community and improve uh, um, working with the community. So we uh, have a, multiple ways how you can engage with the community. So um, um, if we go to the next slide, I'll, so there's a two, two working groups currently going on. One is the, as I said, the database working group. So if you're interested in supporting uh, other databases than just the MySQL, which is currently worked on, um, you're invited to join the, uh, the working group and you know, contribute to that if you're interested in you know, having support for another database than just MySQL. Um, there is another working group going on um, regarding uh, supporting other formats of container images. So there's the typical format of, of container images that you know everybody knows, is aware of, but there are other formats that are more compact, for example, uh, and, and allows, allow, for example, a better startup time of container images. So there is a, a working group going on and it's quite active actually. Um, to support this, this format. So one format is NIDIS, for example, that is a more compact format of image storing. So you could, you know, uh, pack up more images into your storage. And this will be uh, as an effort to integrate this functionality into Harbor. Um, last step, how you can engage with the community. So this is gonna be the, the next slide. So the, there are four ways how you could engage with the community of Harbor. And the, I think the most easiest one for all developers is of course Slack. So there is a Slack channel on, um, um, the link is missing here, but the Slack channel is on the CNCF. Um, CNCF and the channel is Harbor and Harbor Dev. Um, so if you have questions, you can join the, the users channel on Harbor. And if you would like to contribute to the project and if you have uh, developer related questions, you can join the developer channel on the CNCF. And there is also a, a CNCF mailing list, mostly used for announcements. So if you wanna stay up, stay up to date with Harbor, it's advised to, to join this mailing list. And of course, the same goes for the Twitter handle. 
it is mostly used for announcement and you know if you want to be up to date with the current release state of harbor and last but not least is our regular meetings uh, on i think it's every second week on uh, wednesday afternoon uh, central european time um you're welcome to join the meeting as a user or as a contributor or as a potential contributor you can join the join the meeting and you know see for and learn first first hand uh, where Harbor is currently standing at. And there is also a special working group meetings that are happening uh, every another week as well. But when they're happening, you can find it in the, in the community and also uh, in, the, in the Slack channel. So this is the, the best way how you could engage and communicate with the community. Um, that's it from my side. Thank you very much for your attention and we are now open for questions.